What should I get for my first camera? A question that is asked all the time and always seems to be answered with whatever fits your needs or just pick a system and don't look back. I have a little bit different of an answer to this question. However, it does vary depending upon stills or video. Today I'll be answering this based off of stills, but I will be answering it a little bit later for video as well. If you're new to the world of DSLRs, you're probably looking at cameras such as the Canon T6 or the Nikon D3300. Both are capable cameras and will have the features to help you learn photography as well as to take photos of your kids and family. If you decide to invest in one of these systems, you're going to be spending around $600 and that's just for the camera and the kit lens. Then if you want the longer lenses for sports or wildlife, or even if you want to upgrade to the better kit lens, you're going to be spending even more money. That's a lot out of pocket for a cheap camera. Then in a couple months, let's say you realize that you're not really using the camera and you decide to sell it because it's just taking up space. Then you've just lost a lot of money because the camera lost some value. So which camera should you buy? So to answer this question, I put my money where my mouth is. This is the Nikon D5200, my recommendation for a good first camera. It's two generations old and I got it used on eBay for $300 with a lens and accessories. That's about half the price of the D3300 new. But do you get half the camera? The D3300 does have the newer 24.2 megapixel sensor. As far as resolution, that's not that big of a deal, but it does allow the camera to go up to 12,800 ISO expandable up to 25,600. It also has the new XP4 processor. However, the D5200 does have 39 focus points with 9 being cross-type, whereas the D3300 has 11 and only one cross-type. The D5200 also has a 3-inch articulating screen where the D3300 is fixed. Now compared to the newer D5500, it also has that newer 24.2 megapixel sensor. However, on this one, it goes up to 25,600 ISO natively. It also has the newer XP4 processor, but unlike the D3300, it has 39 focus points as well as 9 being cross-type. It has a 3.2 inch articulating screen, but in this case, not only is it bigger, but it is also a touch screen. So on paper, the 3300 and the 5200 are fairly similar, with the 5200 doing a little bit better. The 5500 is the clear winner, but I'm going to test this in the real world. Right now I'm in our studio and I'm going to do a quick portrait shoot with my lovely girlfriend Megan. Keep in mind that even though we are using a professional lighting setup and background, all the details still going through that kit 18-55 into the D5200. Another great use for this camera is going to be taking pictures on vacation, so we headed up to a trail near us to test this out. When in auto mode, the camera tended to underexpose the subject when the background was bright, but the detail in the shadows is easily recovered if you're shooting raw. A very important trait to this camera is that it is very light and small, so it is easy to carry around with you. A very popular setting for parents would probably be the sports setting. When in this mode, it tended to use just the center autofocus point, but it did also tend to underexpose the image. I then shot in manual and let the camera decide the focusing point. It still seemed pretty accurate, but this time it was properly exposed. 
Overall, this cheap DSLR I picked up for less than $300 did great and was able to offer a professional image quality I would be comfortable using on a shoot. This little camera has great usability, takes great photos, and creates a starting point to grow from. There is no reason to buy the latest and greatest for your first camera, especially when you are just trying out photography and you have bodies like this floating around. Once you learn and have found you have gotten everything you can out of a camera like this, that's when you know you should upgrade, and that's when it gets fun.